Welcome to November 1st, 2022. The State Weather Podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily, Wyoming's News Authority. Also brought to you by Chugwater Chili. Go to chugwaterchili.com, use the checkout code chugwaterdon and get 20% off. That's a big chunk off your purchase price. Get ready for some chili. Not only do you need to get ready for some chili, stock up, get ready because chili weather Chili eating weather is right around the bend. We've got a lot of moving parts going on with our weather pattern. It's going to be windy and mild today and into Wednesday ahead of the front, especially windy along Interstate 80 in Wyoming between Cheyenne and Rollins. Going to have a lot of wind there through Muddy Gap and Shirley Basin. Windy areas in I-25 parts of Colorado as well. And then rain and snow showers are going to be moving into the western areas Wednesday and Wednesday night. We have a a lot of mountain snow coming over the next seven to 10 days. Along and west of the divide is where it's gonna be the most wet. East of the divide, it is still gonna be tricky to get moisture out onto the front range and plains. This is mainly gonna be a situation where the mountains and for folks living west of the Continental Divide, into the Pacific Northwest, into the Great Basin, that's where the heaviest precipitation will fall. This is a very snowy pattern coming up for the mountains. The mountains this week with this first front and then a secondary front moving in later in the weekend are going to do very well to pick up more significant mountain snows. So hunters and travelers, there's going to be some weather to deal with. And that was after just a beautiful Halloween yesterday. And the Pacific Northwest is going to see the, most of the action. And we'll show you that here in a minute. Now here's a sign of the times. Dave Bell sending this great shot of some geese they're near Pinedale. Now, what direction? Dave reports the geese were flying south. There you go. I don't need to tell you anymore. The geese are headed south. They know what's going on and they sense the change that is coming. And you can see it here in the satellite loop here coming out of the North Pacific. We showed you this yesterday. These clouds show you the real cold air coming off the Pacific into the Pacific Northwest. Cold, moist air gets pushed into the western parts of the United States and Canada is just a snow factory for the mountains. Cold, moist, unstable air getting pushed off the Pacific with strong jet stream winds is just a great way to make it rain on the coast, which will be found right here, and heavy snow in the mountains as we show you the mountain. Look at this feed of moisture coming all the way across the Pacific into this area here. So this is a real moist connection all across the Pacific with this weather system. So there's a lot going on here, and it's going to really impact especially the northwest United States, western Canada here in the coming days. As the system crashes the coast, it comes on in, but strong southwest winds ahead of it mean mild air and windy conditions along and east of the Continental Divide for today and tomorrow. This is the precipitation forecast through tomorrow morning. So you can see where the heavier moisture is gonna be. It's gonna be in Oregon, Northern California there, parts of Eastern Washington, the Panhandle of Idaho, the mountains north and east of Boise, getting into the action as well. While out here, the wind warmy, windy warm pattern keeps things dry through tomorrow. But by Thursday, 6 p.m., the low is swinging down through Arizona. We talked about it splitting. It still is with a piece going up here, another piece that's gonna swing east like this. Look at all of this blue up here. This is a tremendous amount of cold air. In fact, this morning, it was five degrees in Fairbanks with snow. So the cold is there, it's up there. Then we have a secondary wave of moisture that'll be coming in, we'll show you here in a minute. But this is the precipitation forecast through 6 p.m. Friday. So you can see it gets extended out into Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Northwest New Mexico here. So the high country, the mountain passes all through this area will see significant snow, wind and falling temperatures. Look at that snow there in the Sierras, even parts of Central California gonna get some rain. Look at the panhandle of Idaho, Northwest Montana. Then look at this swath there out of Alberta into Saskatchewan. That's gonna be heavy snow up there. And look at all the red and orange here. Now this is something that did not happen a year ago. Last fall, it was not snowy very much in that part of the world. And that led to some problems with the, the drought conditions as we headed into the spring and summer of last year. And we'll tell you why it's a different situation this year. So you can see the snow that's gonna be spreading into the area. Notice there's just not a lot along and east of I-25. 
And that is the pattern that we're going to have. Just along and east of I-25, there's not going to be much. But west of the I-25 corridor, you can see where the action really, really gets going with the snowfall. Now, this is the first system. This is through Friday evening. A secondary system with that blue arrow showing moist cold air just getting driven into the Cascades, into Portland, into Seattle, those areas down into areas, even San Francisco. This is just a, a rain and snow factory for the Pacific Northwest with that cold, moist air. And what happens is pieces of this storm get ejected across the Rockies. And what ends up happening, it's hard to see, it's really subtle. But I want you to look at this area right here. That's cold, moist air. This is Monday morning. By Monday night, that same area moves here into Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Eastern Idaho, and into Colorado. It doesn't look like much on the map, but boy, this is a great way to make it snow in the mountains and more cold, moist air just gets driven in to that area. So the end result, this is the second wave. This is basically from Saturday through Wednesday morning the next week. Another very impressive wet pattern here. And then while it's not as heavy, impressive moisture gets driven further east. And look at eastern Montana, North Dakota. That could be a snow event here early next week up there. We'll need to watch that. Notice along and east of I-25 here, there's a dry slot. So this is a pattern that basically stays north of Interstate 70. And this is the second round of snow. Look at that there in the Sierras, in the Pacific Northwest. Wow, that is really great news. But really all the Intermountain West, this is really good news. And that's where that potential winter storm could be developing early next week for parts of the Northern Plains and Southern Canada. This is the 10 day snowfall total. Now it's a model, it overdoes it. So don't take this verbatim. This is a guide, but this really shows you the potential for the high country to really get a lot of snow. And if we were to focus into the Pacific Northwest, this is for the next 10 days from today through next Thursday and Friday. Look at these snow totals in the mountains of Oregon, Washington State, down into the part of the Northern Sierras as well. But all across the Intermountain West, this is great news for the snowpack and for skiers. And speaking of snowpack, you see all the dark blue? The dark blue shows snowpacks far above average to date. Now notice, as you get along and east of the divide, we have lesser snowfall totals, but we're gonna see these numbers increase as well. This is really good news and something we didn't see a year ago. Why? Because of those sea surface temperature anomalies in the North Pacific. Of course, here's La Nina, which is continues, but these warm sea surface temperatures relative to average. Now the water temperatures here are not warm, but they're just warmer than the 30 year average, which is enough to change things up with air pressure patterns, the moisture distribution. We did not have this a year ago. I want you to show you what it was like a year ago. It is the exact opposite. See how much colder the Gulf of Alaska was? Now it seems opposite world here. You would think a cold Gulf of Alaska would mean cold and snowy weather for Canada, Alaska, and the Western United States. It actually doesn't, at least during this time of year. You want this to be more stormy, colder, and wet, and that's what we have. So it is looking like November and December of 2022 is gonna have a different flavor to it to November and December of 2021. And here's another reason to think about this. We've been talking about the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, and when it goes negative, that's a cold signal, not only for the West United States, but really most of the lower 48 states. We have this little dip coming, but boy, look what happens this weekend into early next week. The average of all the model runs on the European model strongly negative through November 16th. The Eastern Pacific Oscillation is strongly negative. If we to go out even further, we can see that the average basically keeps it in a negative phase. So there's lots of cold signals here. Here's the Arctic Oscillation. We'll talk about the Arctic Oscillation in a later podcast, but when the Arctic Oscillation goes into a negative phase, that also means cold air is coming high out of the higher latitudes to the lower latitudes. So there are a lot of signals adding up to a much different scenario in the coming next two weeks compared to the very mild weather we've been enjoying. And here you can see it. This is out to November 16th. 
lot of cold air. This is, I don't want to call this the Hudson Bay Vortex yet, but this is a, a vortex of very cold air building in central Canada by the middle of November. So as we said at the beginning, a lot of moving parts. And this is the 15-day snowfall forecast. If that much snow falls in Canada, up into Alaska, parts of the Northwest United States, that does impact temperatures later on into the month of December. Have yourself a great Tuesday.